Good evening and welcome. Welcome to this service where we come together tonight to celebrate Monday Thursday, the institution of the Lord's Supper, Jesus as the servant king. Come tonight knowing that all are welcome at this table because of Christ, the one who came to be one of us, to live like us, to die like us, and to be resurrected that we may have eternal life like him. Welcome. Please join me in our opening of worship. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher says, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. We come tonight to celebrate with our Lord and Savior. As we come together tonight, we hear these first words from Scripture on how to find the upper room. We are to follow the Christ. Listen to the story. In a time where it would not have been that men would be carrying the water, Jesus says, you will come to a man who is carrying water. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner, the teacher asks, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. We are to follow Christ, the carrier of the living water. And when we get to where Christ is going, we are to ask God, the owner, where may we eat and prepare the Passover, that we may sit down with the teacher as we are all disciples of Christ. And then Christ goes on to continue to tell us that it will be a large room upstairs, all furnished. Everything is taken care of. This is where we are to go. This is what we are to be seeking. And we are to make preparations there. We are to prepare this, we are to be the servants of the servant king. So tonight, we come together in this room, in this time, in this space, wherever you are, to prepare our hearts to partake in this meal and to learn from the servant king. This is the beginning of our journey tonight. Let us join in the hymn as we gather at your table.
As we continue our journey tonight, let us join in our gathering. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, you shall never wash my feet. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew he was, who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on the clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what it is that I have done for? You call me Lord and teacher, and it is right that you do so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have, not, I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than the master, and no messenger greater than the one who sends them. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Our God came to be the servant king in the form of Jesus the Christ. He came to be one of us not to rule over us in the way that we are used to. 
but in the simple act that we see here tonight. He humbles himself to the point of a servant and washes the feet of the disciples. This was an act of not only humility, but of welcome. It was an act that would draw people in, of hospitality. Here he was, the King of kings, Lord of lords, the Prince of Peace, who was about to do the greatest thing that any one person could do for another. And yet, rather than asking for praise, rather than asking for solace, rather than asking for them to feel pity on him, he got down on his own knees and he washed their feet. We too come together and the Lord comforts us, continues to serve, washes our feet, and then commands us to do the same. So as we come together tonight, let us humble our hearts. Let us show hospitality to those around us. Let us open ourselves to the call of God to love one another in the deepest senses. Please join me in the hymn, Be Known to Us in the Breaking of journey continues tonight as we celebrate this institution of the Lord's Supper, which we commonly refer to as communion. There is so much more about this meal that we tend to not understand, and I thought it would walk us through that tonight, because Jesus took the Old Testament and the celebration of the Jewish faith and made it ours but he did so at the very end. So I thought it would walk us through this Passover meal, which is referred to as the Seder, helping us to understand what Jesus had done, that this is not just about this ending where Jesus breaks the bread and gives it to them and gives them the wine, making this covenant. But he is covenanting with them along with the covenant of old, from the exile, or the exodus rather. From this very Passover meal that he was celebrating with the disciples, he gives us this new covenant, an extension, if you will. Not a changing of, but an extension of what God had done for God's people all along. So let us begin by joining in the Seder with the opening prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to kindle the festival lights. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, 
who has kept us alive and sustained us and brought us to this season. May our home be consecrated, O God, by the light of your countenance, shining upon us in blessing and bringing us peace. Amen. In this first section of the Seder, the Kaddush, the cup of thanksgiving and blessing of the feast, the elder of the household would begin. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us above all peoples and has exalted us above all tongues and has hallowed us with your commandments. In love you have given us, O Lord our God, seasons of gladness, holy days, and times for rejoicing. This day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the time of our freedom, an assembly day of holiness, a memorial to the exodus from Egypt. For you have chosen us and have sanctified us above all peoples, and you have given us your sacred seasons for our inheritance. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies Israel and the festivals. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has hallowed us with your commandments and has commanded us concerning the washing of hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the soil. Behold, this is the bread of the affliction, which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who want, who are in want, come and celebrate the Passover with us. May it be God's will to redeem us from all the evil and from all slavery. Part of this meal is the teaching, the telling instruction, the story of deliverance from Egypt, from Exodus 13. It's referred to as the Haggadah. And it would begin with the youngest child. And then the elder explaining. And the youngest child would say, Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat either leavened or unleavened bread. Why on this night do we eat only unleavened bread? On all other nights, we eat all kinds of herbs. Why on this night do we eat especially bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not dip herbs in any condiment. Why on this night do we dip them in salt water and horaces? On all other nights, we eat without special festivities. Why on this night do we hold this Passover service? And the leader would say, The Syrians pursued our fathers who went down into Egypt and sojourned there in very small number and grew into a nation great and strong and of infinite multitude. And the Egyptians afflicted us and persecuted us, laying on us most grievous burdens. And we cried to the Lord God of our fathers who heard us and looked down upon our affliction and labor and distress. And he brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and a stretched out arm with great terror, with signs and wonders. Therefore, even if all of us were wise and well-versed in the Torah, it would still be our duty from year to year to tell the story of our deliverance from Egypt. Indeed, to dwell at length on it is accounted praiseworthy. And it would be read from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this day they are to take a lamb for each family. A lamb from each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join 
its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided and proportioned to one to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its heads, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood of the Lord shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And they would continue on to the very end with all of the instruction that God had given them. This was the feast that they would partake in, and they were teaching it year after year. At this point, the lamb would be brought forward and placed in front of the leader, and the leader lifts the lamb up, and all would ask, What is the meaning of Pesach? And he would reply, Pesach means the Paschal Lamb, which our forefathers sacrificed to the Lord in memory of that night when the Holy One passed over the houses of our fathers in Egypt, as it is written. When your children ask, what do you mean by this observance? You shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord. For he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the leader would uncover the unleavened bread and hold it. And everyone would ask, What is the meaning of matzah? And he would reply, This is the bread of affliction which our fathers took with them out of Egypt, as it is written. They baked unleavened cakes of the dough that they had brought out of Egypt. It was not leavened because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait. Nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. And the leader would lift up the bitter herbs while all asked, What is the meaning of Mahor? And he would reply, Mahor means bitter herb. We eat Mahor to recall that the Egyptians embittered the lives of our fathers as it is written. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with the hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. And the leader would lift up his cup, and they would join in thanksgiving in the Halal Psalm. And the leader would say, In every generation, each one ought to regard himself as though he had personally come out of Egypt, as it is written, You shall tell your children on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. Therefore, it is our duty to praise, thank, laud, glorify, extol, bless, exalt, and adore him. Who did all of these miracles for our fathers and for ourselves? He has brought us forth from slavery to freedom, from sorrow to joy, from mourning to festive day, from darkness to a great light, and from subjugation to redemption. Let us then recite before him a new song. And he would set down his cup without drinking from it, and all would stand and recite this song. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob, from the people of a strange language, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled. Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like the lambs. Why is it, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, that you turn your back? O mountains, that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of, God, of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And all would be seated. And there would be the solemn blessing of the food. The leader would take his cup in his hand and say, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has redeemed us and has redeemed our fathers from Egypt and has permitted us to live unto this night, to partake on it of the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. So may the Lord our God and the God of our fathers permit us to live on to other festive seasons and holy days. May your will be done through Jacob, your chosen servant, so that your name shall be sanctified in the midst of all the earth, and that all the peoples be moved to worship you with one accord. And we shall sing new songs of praise unto you for our redemption and for the deliverance of our souls. Blessed are you, O Lord, who redeems Israel. And they would reply, Blessed are you, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And all would take a second drink from their cup. And the leader would then take the matzah and bless it with the following prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And he would break it into pieces, each one holding up a piece of their matzah, they would say, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us concerning the eating of unleavened bread, and all would eat. And the leader would continue saying, Let us combine the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs and eat them together as it is written, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. And they would all come together. And putting this sandwich together, they would take and they would eat, saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us concerning the eating of the bitter herbs. And then they would sit down and they would eat this meal together. The roasted lamb, the matzah, the, mah the mahor. And they would drink and they would celebrate the Passover of the Lord. Please join me in the hymn, Jesus Took the Bread.
would have been during that last blessing of the meal that Jesus would have broke with tradition. He would have stopped there, and this is where he would have instituted the Lord's Supper. Let us now partake in that meal together as we remember how that would have happened. Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it was written of him. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for, one of, for that one not to have been born. Heavenly Father, bless this bread as you bless each of us. We thank you, Father, for all that you give us, for the food we eat, for the promises you give, for the love and protection of all your people. Amen. Take this bread. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, and our God, we give you thanks for the bounty of your fruit, which from this creation has quenched the thirst of our bodies, as you quench the thirst of our souls. May your mighty name be blessed by all your creation, for the powerful works your hands have provided. Amen. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you. Let us go, for my time has come. It is at this point where Jesus would have went out to Gethsemane with the disciples. They would have made the journey out there where he wanted to pray. Let us remember the betrayal and arrest of our Lord and Savior. Then Jesus with his disciples went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little fur further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. He then returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping, taking your rest? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes our betrayer.
Jesus has been arrested. Jesus has been arrested. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Go. Our Lord and Savior has been betrayed and arrested. Let us see what is to come.